what this was really about and everybody wanted to be evident was the community, what's best for the community. And as you know, the city of Louisville is very closely tied with the University of Louisville. And we have a proven commodity and we have someone who, you know, integrity driven, who always does the right thing. And, and if they're looking for characteristics, characteristics of an AD that we're looking for, then I think we've got him and he's interested in the job. And we think that uh, the search committee should reach out to him. And so, I mean, there was a lot of guys in here and uh, we wanted to address every aspect of it. And it was all about community. Everyone in here has affected the community in a positive way, whether it be philanthropically, whether it be for the University of Louisville, and they wanted their voices to be heard. And so I think, I think we had a, a good crew and it was very productive. And yes, there's strong movement. People who want Tom Jurich to be our athletic director again. Is there any kind of action item that came out of this or anything that you guys plan or that anybody plans to do? Everyone's on board. That, that remains to be seen. We're, we're all meeting. We've got a couple of committees that we formed and uh, that has yet to be decided. But um, people a lot smarter than me will make that decision. Is there a plan of action kind of? To, yes. What would that be? What kind of direction would that take? As far as definitively, we have yeah. a, a, a bunch of options. We, you know, we want to make sure. I think, I think the community, what Tom accomplished here is pretty well known. I think his resume, you can look around and see it in Cardinal Park and the things he accomplished with entering the ACC, higher GPAs, student athlete graduation, all of those things. Will, you know, I think the thing is just get the message out there. And first and foremost is hopefully get Louisville to reach out to him, the University of Louisville and the search committee, so that he can come publicly and say, I'm interested. How do you react to Denny Crum's statement last night? You know, it's unfortunate. Everyone loves Denny. And, and he, boy, did he accomplish a lot. You know, um, I would have liked to seen that go a lot smoother, the departure there. I think Tom would have too. You know, I think there was efforts to make that go a lot smoother than it did. You know, you can't, everybody loves Denny. I love Denny. I hosted his courtside luncheon for years and, you know, I have nothing negative to say about Denny. I, th I just think that's unfortunate, um, his, his feelings about Tom. So I, I really can't comment on that. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and I certainly respect Denny's. What do you think of the job Josh has done so far as interim? You know, I I think thus far, you know, I, I know this, Tom, and Al, you'll agree, very pro Kenny Payne. So I think that was, um, you know, something that united the community. But I, I think there were other hands in that. And I know Tom is very pro Kenny Payne as well. I think that's a good, it's nice to have that positive momentum, yes. But I do think that, you know, I wish, I think Josh, I hear nothing but good things. Smart guy. Nice guy, all of those good things. But I do think this is a Division One school, and I think experience counts. Uh, knowing football and that side of it, and let's face it, guys, fundraising is important, and Tom has that ability. And that, to me, is where we are with the University of Louisville. Finances do mean something, unfortunately. I wish, I wish we were in a better position, but we're not. Do you think Tom is too divisive to get this job? I, I don't see the divisive side of it. I, I mean... I think there's a misunderstanding about uh, things that happened and why they happened. And I think the people who know, this was something and how you can vouch for this. It was said over and over again. Tom is as honest as they come. Everyone in there said, you know, I've been sideways with Tom before and some of us have. With that being said, they said, but he always was honest with me and every decision he made was for the University of Louisville and what's best for the student athletes, the coaches and the University of Louisville athletic program. And that's what he was hired to do. So. I don't, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see it as real divisive. I think if I had to guess, I would 90, 10 Tom's favor. I, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and I want everyone's voice to be heard. We're not against that, right, Al? No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't see the divisiveness, though. Has Tom had conversations with Kenny that you know of? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Before he was coach, maybe yes. after. I don't know, you know, Tom, in it. Yeah, Tom put together the program where athletes, student athletes could come back and get their degree. Kenny was the first one to go through that. And Tom put that together. And I think, you know, and Coach Payne, they have a great relationship. Um, they talk quite a bit. And, um, you know, I can't speak for Kenny on, I, I, I just know that I, from what I understand, they're friends and on a professional level as far as respect for each other. What are the pieces of this? Talking to board members, talking to community, what, what, what do you guys come away feeling like you need to do? Um, I think we're definitely going to have to talk to the board members. I mean, they're the ones making the decision. So I think they need the fans' voices heard. Um, we're all fans here. You said both of us in the mic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We are all fans here. So we want our voices heard. And 
You know, we had a guy that was here for 20 years that took this athletic program to heights that it's never been to before. And he was rudely dismissed and it was not properly done and it was illegal. And that's why they no longer can you have a governor completely dismiss a board. And he shouldn't have been gone and his family was ridiculed and, and so on and so forth. And there's, there was, that was a wrong thing, that's the wrong way to go about doing that regardless. And I think he wants to come back. I think he, he truly loves this city. He truly loves this university. And he, he will come back and he will do it with zest. And I think he can get this program back on the rails, both financially and athletically. And, and to be clear, he, he did not lobby for this. He doesn't, he didn't push us to do any, he didn't want us to do any of this. He isn't aware of a lot of this, but it was funny how once we found out that Tom had interest in the job, then all the people approached us. We didn't recruit anyone. Business leaders, young and old, uh, male and female, uh, all demographics came to us and said, how can I help? How can I help? Because I think they saw what he accomplished and the integrity he had and how he talked to every fan and how everyone was important and student athletes and helping them out. There were some fantastic stories told in there. And it really spoke to the integrity of Tom and how he is very inclusive. So to me, we didn't recruit. Tom doesn't want to lobby for this job. He won't, and nor should he have to. So I think that's what's, you know, people say, well, Tom wants the job. No, Tom, Tom wants it done the right way. And if, if, if people don't think Tom's the right man for the job, then, then he'll, he'll live with that. I was, I was going to ask you about the meeting itself. What, just, just having walked out of it, what sticks out in your mind of, of things that were said or people that stood up or what have you? I would say the admiration for good for the community. Every one of them in there said, he's good for the community. It's not just about athletics. And I think that was really the central focus there was, you know, this isn't just good for student athletes and graduation rates and all those things we love and winning. It's good for everyone. It's good for the city. It was yeah. brought up as good for the city. It's good for the university. It's good for the state. And while Louisville as an entity is down the University of, that is, it's bad for the state. It's yeah. definitely bad for the city. It's bad for business downtown. Uh, what we average 4,500 people, eight. 6,500 people for basketball in Louisville. We need to get, we need to have a leader that can rejuvenate this crowd. I think Kenny will do some of that. Winning will do some of that. But we need a leader that can also raise money. We also need a leader that can support Kenny. This is Kenny's first job. You need a professional, experienced AD to help Kenny through some tough times that he may go through. This is a group that with very deep pockets. Do you expect there to be a financial aspect to your support? Was it mentioned? You know, I, I think if I had to guess, I think they'd be more open to it because obviously these are guys that Tom would knock on the door and get help. But as you said, it wasn't mentioned, but I think they're saying, hey, you know, I'm for it. If a guy has a vision and we know we're moving in a positive direction, they haven't seen it of late. And I think they just like to see that return. I found it interesting though, too. I think there's a narrative with the University of Louisville or not with the University of Louisville, with some that say the NCAA will have a problem with this. And we had a couple of people there who were very familiar with the NCAA. Tom was never named in any of in any of the claims, any anything against Tom. There was nothing there was nothing ever said about Tom Jurich. In fact, there was someone here very close and said that Tom Jurich, they would do cartwheels if Tom was back. He created the compliance department. He would report every time we had an issue. He was very transparent. He said so that that narrative of the NCAA would be upset. No, they, the issue was never with Tom. Do you see any of anything that mentions Tom's name in? I, not there, just not there. Okay, my question I guess was about the financing of, of uh, promotional things. We've already seen a billboard. Are you planning anything like that? Or is that uh, off the table or what? I don't think anything's off the table. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, there was no, really, that's one thing I wanted to make clear with these guys. I don't, no one was asking for money here at all. You know, it was just about support for Tom. It's time. People were upset with the way things are going now. Let's put it in the right direction. And this, don't get me wrong, Kenny Payne and everything, fantastic. Tom's all for it. We're all for it. We're happy. This is, this is the kind of thing we want more of, that kind of positive momentum. Do you think if the university came to Tom and said, we want you to be a part of the process, interview with this group of people. Do you think he would do that? Is that something he's interested in going through or would he rather it be some different way? 
Um, Once they approach him. Yeah, if they approach him, you know, he definitely will speak to him without question. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that this group, he's been gone since 2017. If I was on the committee, I'd want to know his vision going forward. I don't think he'd have any problem whatsoever saying, here's the way I see things as they are now, and here's the, the direction I would like to take going forward. You know, I, I don't think charisma, integrity, drive, focus, those don't go out of style, and it's rare when you get all that in one person, and we've all witnessed that. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many quotes people really get an emotional and in, in talking about not only what he accomplished, but in the way in which he did it. Is it fair to say everyone in the meeting tonight is pro Tom Gersh for committee? Yeah, I mean, I would, yes. I would say yes. Yes, and when we listen to objections or any challenges that that was the floor was open for that and we realized nothing ever goes smooth when it comes to you know a new position but uh yes yeah overwhelmingly so i mean to where you know applause and cheers and uh, i think everybody's happy at just the thought of having him back in the seat is there any irony in being in the shadow of one you trust <laughs> <laughs> Only you can come up with that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your claim. That's okay. Yeah. You know what? I, I like it. I like it. That's funny. David Grissom was not here, right? No. 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 <laughs> you're going to keep going here. <laughs> trying to lighten the mood. You know? So, but, okay, your thoughts. Let me put I mean, the mic on you. Yeah, um, I mean, um, so what, what's, the next, what's the next news item that will come out of this, do you think? Well, there, there'll be action here because everyone knows yeah. there is some urgency here. There's a sense of urgency. So as far as what the action is, we named some committees. We put out some options out there. But as far as what's going to be, there's guys much smarter than me, guys. Really, I'm probably the last guy you wanted to stop and ask these questions. But I want to talk because I do You're the think, only one to talk to us. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, and I think the, the reason I want to is because, hey, I do want it out there that, yes, he's interested because there's a lot of people saying Tom's not interested. Yes, he is. It should be done. He wants it done the right way. As it was, it was, it was explained here by someone who's been through the process, a search committee doesn't wait for applicants. It's not working at McDonald's. It is, we go out, we find the best talent, and we aggressively pursue them. Tom wants to do it the right way. I do think this committee should pursue him, at least talk to him and say, we're interested in you. Once that happens, then he'll publicly make it known, I'm interested. Where your conversation with uh, board members at this point? Uh, very little. I mean, as far as, uh, there's a lot of people in there obviously who know board members and they will let their voices be heard. They made that apparent in the meeting. But as far as, you know, this, th what I really want to stress here is this was not propaganda. This wasn't any, we wanted nothing but facts. Everybody was like, we want facts. Everyone in there said the facts. We just think resume against resume, experience against experience and a guy who's accomplished something and positive things, we got our guy. That's my thought, and I thought that was pretty universal in the, in the room, yeah. Do you kind of feel like if you can get a conversation to happen that the chances go way up that it happens with the university and Tom? I wish I, wish I could answer that one because that's not, not for me to answer. I, you know, I, I think enough people have seen the way Tom handled things and fans like myself, I obviously am not one of the power brokers here in town, but I know integrity when I see it. And and I know someone who is driven when I see it. And I need uh, and I saw his charisma and how he could he could really put the University of Law. I mean, the ACC speaks for itself. My goodness. You said, Eric Crawford, I'll quote you. Mm -hmm. As you said, everyone talks about how much the ACC helped UofL financially. They don't talk what about what would have been the cost if we did not get in the ACC. You said that. That's a great quote. No one talks about what if this didn't happen? Okay, what if we didn't win these championships in, in, in baseball and soccer and football and all? We always talk about, well, look what it brought to us. Well, someone had to drive that train. That was Tom. Are we good? I appreciate you guys coming out.